morning, Mark, and welcome, or good evening. What time of the day is it? Tell us what time of the day it is in Australia. <clears throat> Look, it's a, it's quite civilised. It's only 5.30 in the afternoon. Oh. Lady, um, so, no, we've got you've got me at a good time. Oh, good, good. But actually, theoretically, this is my best time. I'm a morning person usually, but... I need the coffee first. So anyway, uh, it's really good to see you and thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us about hygiene because I think it's a really, it is a unique product. Um, how did that all come about? Tell us a little bit about um, how, I mean, your involvement in dentistry because you're a dentist and how you sort of got to this point. I mean, your background, a wee bit about dentistry and what interests you in dentistry because we all have our own thing that we love <laughs> yeah well thanks thanks very much lee and um it's it's just a real pleasure to be chatting with someone who takes oral health and oral hygiene just as seriously as i do and i, I will just preface the whole conversation by saying that I'm, I'm not the sales guy i'm i'm sort of the the clinical science guy when it comes to hygiene so i will That's try and make this <laughs> that's important that's what I want I mean the, the sales people do the sales thing um I always say I always say I'll tell you how to use it I'll tell you how it's going to benefit your oral health if you want to know all the sort of well whistles and all that speak to somebody who sells it <laughs> yeah yeah well that's that's exactly right so I will try and make this as uh, as sort of as entertaining as possible but the subject and how I got involved with hygiene is really a very serious subject and it's a, it's a critical issue uh, for people's general health. And when I'm explaining why I sort of started down this path of developing hygiene and the full range of products, uh, the, the world is really waking up uh, and the medical profession, the nursing profession, the dental profession, is all starting to wake up to the fact that we've actually, and the research is, and the science has shown this for many years, is that the germs and the diseases in your mouth go on to affect your entire body. So, you know, germs in the mouth, dental diseases of the mouth do track down into your lungs uh, and cause infections, even pneumonia. They can certainly trigger asthma. They trickle down into your stomach and affect your digestion. They certainly get into your bloodstream and that travels through your entire body. So it affects your heart and your, the rest of your cardiovascular system. It affects your brain. In fact, pretty well every organ uh, in the body. And removable dental appliances, you know, whether it's a sports mouth guard, whether it's an orthodontic appliance, uh, I, wear a, I wear a night guard to stop me grinding my teeth. Uh, a lot of patients uh, are wearing dentures, both full dentures and partial dentures. Yeah, that's, that's right. And, uh, and you know, that's right. And then look, they're, they're everywhere. And, and, um, and the germs that collect on these removable dental appliances. Uh, so in the body, there are good, yeah, in the body, there are good germs and there are bad germs. Well, unfortunately, the germs that grow and collect on these removable appliances are the bad ones, you know. And, and uh, I, I guess the most important thing I want people to take away from today's catch up is that we really do need to start taking the idea of cleaning these removable dental appliances, whatever that might be, you know, a lot more seriously. Um, and, you know, we're about the only sort of, uh, interest group that doesn't take these sort of things terribly seriously. I mean, if you were to put something in and out of your mouth day after day and year after year without cleaning it properly, you'd be breaking pretty well every health code, you would be violating pretty well every health code there is written down. I mean, even when I was in the early research of um, the, the tubes that make up home brewing kits are made out of the same material as sports mouth guards, the EVA, and the Home Brewers Association take cleaning their tubes out more seriously than it seems the sports fraternity, because we're not, we don't hear anything about keeping our sports mouth guards clean. And yet 
they did a, a there was a very interesting study done over in the United States that that looked at a group of you know about 80 American football players and they determined that there were over 340 different types of bacteria growing on sports mouth guards and over a hundred different types of mold and yeast growing on these guards so you know these removable appliances and it sounds awful but they're sitting in the mouth like little germ factories uh, and, and little thrush engines as well. So if you imagine putting your dirty sports mouth guard in, the, the first few lungfuls are going to be, you know, really quite uh, germ filled. And, and we know for a fact that that can't be good for you. And, we, and it's been proven, you've only got to, don't take my word for it, just Google dirty sports mouth guard and sports induced asthma. And there's plenty of research there. So, you know, there is a, a science based uh, reason for the reason I sort of needed to get into this this area of oral health and, and oral hygiene and yes I have I'm a clinical dentist uh, you know I was out in the surgery today um, and working away and, and, and shame on me and, and actually sort of shame on the dental profession actually Lee in that we haven't been able to communicate this message well enough in the past in that these these removable appliances are part of oral hygiene it is related to oral health that is connected directly connected to general health mm -hmm. and that we really do need to do it a lot better and for years you know years decades my patients would come in to see me and they'd have their dirty night guard or their dirty denture and and i'd say look you know you need to sort of keep this cleaner but i really wouldn't give them the products or the techniques or explain well enough why it was so important that they did it better and yeah that's so i was just going to sorry interrupting i also yeah. find that so often they don't bring them with them particularly well, sports cars we just don't see them or we don't know that they're even wearing them well that's right people are sort of uh you, you know almost so embarrassed about the state of their their appliance that they either don't bring them in or as they bring in, they sort of quickly pop them out and sneak them into their top pocket because of the look. I mean, even my own night guard for, for years had this sort of a yellowy tinge to it. And that's calculus or tartar and uh, sort of seeping down into the little micro porosities on the surface of, of uh, the acrylic surface. So, you know, we really do need to start taking this a lot more seriously. But I suppose, you, you know, it wasn't really until I had a, a personal experience. You know, my, my dear mother um, had a lot of trouble with, with keeping her dentures clean. And she, she was always getting them repaired, particularly towards you know, the, the end of her, her life. Um, and you know, do we really expect people with dentures to half fill a basin full of water or to put a towel down? And, and then you know, th these appliances can be really quite sort of slippery. At least. And expensive, too. <laughs> you, you know, um, and, and there's 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 lots of reasons to, to clean them very well, and there's lots of reasons to clean them safely, mm -hmm. uh, and easily. Oh, I, it, look exact and, and and fast. You know, I mean, we're all sort of time poor, so we want to do it safely, and and we want to do it properly. Uh, all of my kids had orthodontics, so you know, there was a phase there where those sort of orthodontic retainers. They were just sort of lying, <laughs> lying, all over the, them up. <laughs> lying all over the house. That's right. And and, and people would, you know, they're, they're literally keeping them in their pocket or in, you know, one of these little sort of funny little sort of containers and uh, not they're not being aerated or air dried, which we know is the correct way to store them. Um, and, and my boys uh, were sort of very strong on football and, you know, their sports mouth guard would end up where most sports mouth guards end up, and that's at the bottom of the sports Bye. bag. And, and With the socks. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's right, you know, and uh, th that's just full of dirt and germs and, and not just sort of, th these are the really nasty ones that can, you know, go on to cause all sorts of problems. So, uh, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't clean uh, your knife and fork and your cutlery and all these other things that go into your mouth, you wouldn't just sort of throw them somewhere and not clean them. And yet it, seems to, have been, it seems to have been normalised that we just sort of 
don't really look after these removable appliances very well. So, and there's so many of them now. You, I mean, you look at the number, I don't know what it's like in Australia, but the interest in adult aligner orthodontics is has shot up. I mean, it's unbelievable how many people are wearing aligners and they're not cleaning them. They're not cleaning them and, and they are, uh, you know, just they're just going in and out of the mouth all the time. And as, as I sort of say, you, you know, you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it with anything else, your coffee cup or, your, or any other device that goes into your mouth or any other part of your body. We're just not we're just not taking this issue seriously enough. And and to be fair, if people look online, the 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 how to clean message is really quite confusing. There's a lot of different sort of home remedies and yeah. the dental profession itself hasn't sort of really got its act together. And um, oh. yeah, so We're not what, 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 the, the need for hygiene was really just to sort of have, you know, some products that were easy to use. Um, and, uh, and very importantly for me uh, was that the end result was a nice sort of shiny, sparkly appliance that looked like it was sort of new and it, and it smelled okay and, and uh, had all, all of that sort of aesthetic appeal as well as just being, uh, you know, healthy to put back into the mouth. So I see you've got, you've got your hygienies behind you. I've got some here. Talk us through how you use the hygiene. Let's hear how the Mr. Hygiene, Dr. Hygiene uses his hygiene. Well, yeah, wonderful. And I, you know, very, very happy. And, and one of my favourite products is, in fact, the uh, Hero product or the, or the Hygiene. And, and uh, please, there's lots of information online, but all you really have to do, and it, there is a little bit of a knack to this. And, and people yes. who, when they first buy it, uh, it does take two or three goes. Uh, but once once you sort of get the hang of it, it's really very, very easy. So we just twist and it, the lid comes off. There's a little little bump and the un it unlocks quite easily. And we can see that we've got five clusters of brushes at the top and five at the bottom. You simply pop your appliance, whether it's a, a denture or a night guard or, or a, a couple of aligners in there, we pop your, your lid back on and then we just rotate it, clicks in and we're now locked in. So we can't now drop out if we drop it, if we lose it, it's just, it's going to be well protected and we're going to save all of that, uh, you know, the, the potential for breaking your appliance. We're then going to place a little, a couple of drops of Dental Fresh and I will just sort of spend a few moments on Dental Fresh if I could. Please do. It is quite simply, and this is where all the science backs this up, it's a soap based product. So, uh, look, you know, again, to, to use the kitchen analogy, you wouldn't just sort of put all your dishes in the sink and throw a fizzy tablet in there and expect them to be clean. We do need to, we need to wash our appliance with a soap-based product. And once and included in the, the soap, we've, we've adjusted the pH or the acid level just down a little bit to a, a very mild pH of 5.0, which is about the acid level of a banana. So really not very... Yeah. you know, corrosive in, in any way. But what that does is it prevents calculus from building up and that's just stains as well. It prevents all those stains and calculus from developing onto your appliance, whether it's a denture or a night guard or an orthodontic appliance. We've at, then added a surfactant, which encourages very rapid drying. Now the importance of rapid drying and in fact, the importance of dry storage is that that's what's going to kill all your spores and your fungal infections. So by soaking it, you might, with, with a fizzy tablet, and, and I'm not against fizzy tablets uh, at all. And in fact, uh, the, the Hygiene uh, travel pack that it comes in even has a little line there. So, you know, I, I encourage uh, soaking, but only for about 10, 15 minutes twice a week in, in whatever favorite uh, fizzy tablet that, you, that you'd like. So I, I did notice you had the Curaprox guy on uh, a, a month or so ago. And, and you know, I, I, I did, my dad's got dentures and, and I, I did the taste test for all of the different fizzy tablets and, and denture soaking solutions. And he thought that the Curaprox one was, was his favorite. So a, a big tip. I, do, for, yeah. for I, I like to give options to people. And actually in fairness, 
until I came across the hygiene, that was what I was using was the Cure Prox, the gel every day, and then their their weekly soak. And the stuff does come up really well. But I I, I have my um, my allegiance has shifted a little bit. <laughs> well, Cure Prox have got you know they it's and the Cure, they've, they've got enough amazing products and and um, you and, and I are both fans. Happy to say that I, I've got their black as white electric sonic brush as well. So, and I use their little okay. thing as to clean between my teeth. But the dry storage and the surfactant is is very very important for for that rapid drying. Um, and then finally, you know, we've got a nice little peppermint flavour to it as well. Now, it is important to wash all of this off because it is a soap-based product, so it still tastes like soap, but it leaves your appliance smelling lovely and fresh and that sort of sparkling clean so we we put a few drops into the side a dash of water and then quite simply just nice easy little rotations don't sort of get sort of too carried away with it we're just going to do the top wash we did together. <laughs> and then that's right <laughs> wonderful and um and it is a, it is don't a bit do it of a like dance. this don't do it no. like this that's a no. mistake if you do it like that, then if your appliance is certainly the orthodontic appliances will start trying to escape out of the side. So, uh, you know, we recommend even just a slight tilt spine, but this top wash, bottom wash, and then you can go the multi if you want, but just a gentle action. Don't sort of get sort of too vigorous with it. Um, and, and look, you know, uh, we, we recommend sort of 30 to 40 seconds uh, for, for a denture, but the reality is uh, if, you're applying, if you're doing this every day, uh, you know, you might be able to get away with a little bit, a little bit less, but it does need to be done every day because this is going back in your mouth and it needs to be cleaned properly every day. So once we've got that and then you can rinse off uh, and that is then going to be your storage container as well. So that just then sits on your bathroom vanity. It does, uh, it, it dries very, very quickly. I give mine a bit of a shake. Uh, for my night guard and that gets rid of the bulk of the water and then it just sits there uh, to, to dry out. Um, so there's your dental fresh. I, the, the size of the hygiene is designed to around what's called the 90 percentile, which means that for 90 percent of jaws, it's going to be an easy fit. But some people have a very broad jaw and especially for full upper dentures, has, I haven't yet seen a partial denture that's had a problem. I haven't yet seen an orthodontic appliance that's had a problem. But some full dentures, if they've got these sort of really broad wings, can sort of, yeah. yeah well, that that it can be a bit of a tight, a bit of a tight squeeze. Um, so for that reason, we did develop the Sure Grip uh, denture brush, uh, and that took a lot of science to get that right. Uh, the, the, the sewer grip denture brush. What I did is I walked over and I measured a doorknob uh, because the other, you know, the, the typical, yeah, that's, so that's just the, the size of a doorknob and we know that you know, that's the right size, that's comfortable. So that's been designed by history. Um, and certainly, you know, this is your sort of normal denture brush that you're going to find down at the supermarket or at the pharmacy and we can see the difference in the size uh, of the brush. So. We're not, we're not sort of going to be cleaning like this. Uh, we're going to be in the hand and rotating it. The other time the sure grip is, is helpful is if some patients do have a very, do have a very dry mouth uh, and that makes the plaque very, very sticky. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they've forgotten or for whatever reason, uh, they haven't been cleaning their appliance on a daily basis, sometimes you do need the extra grunt of, of the Sure Grip Denture Brush. So when I'm providing my products into aged care facilities, for example, we have the Denture Bundle, which has the Hygiene, the Sure Grip and the Dental Fresh, which pretty much covers uh, all, all bases. Um, both brushing options, and this is, this is again, uh, really, really important from a science perspective, uh, all the brushes are replaceable. So, you know, these handles and, and the, the, the mechanism, they'll last for a long, long time, you know, probably a couple of years before they start looking a little bit tired. But I, it, just like your toothbrush, we like our patients to, and it's certainly the recommendation to replace these every sort of three or four months, just exactly the same as you were replacing your toothbrush. Now, I will say that after three months, they still almost look brand new. But at a microscopic level, 
we know that the surface is a little bit rough and it is starting to collect those germs and, and molds uh, that are the, the whole, which is the problem and why we need to sort of then, and that's why you replace your toothbrush yes. every three or four months uh, as well. So we've got the sure grip, the dental fresh there. Um, now, when it comes to sports mouth guards, and, and, and this is uh, uh, very important as well, we've, we're sort of going to be going from the home to the game and then back home again. So if we can take, go through that sequence. Now, I like to have, uh, this, is, this is the cage. Um, it's, it's one of my sort of favorite parts of the, of the hygiene range. And we can see that the, you know, there's just sports mouth guard locked in its cage. And, you know, we, we've got it at home and close him up. Now that'll, that'll then hook onto your, your sports bag. And there it is there and off, off it goes. And one of the great moments was, uh, you know, a, a team bought these and each of the, 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 the players had their own uh, number or their jersey number or their position number stuck on with the sticker. So people can personalize these uh, any way they want, but that's, that's what most of the, the kids down in Oz are doing. And uh, that seems to work very, very well. So, but again, you know, these sports mouth guards are, are trying to do an extremely important job in, uh, in protecting your teeth when you go in. So when you most need protecting, there's your sports mouth guard there to look after you. But if it's sitting in the bottom of the sports bag or, you know, in, in somewhere where it's just been bent out of shape, well, then that's going to make your, your, your mouth guard far less effective in protecting you, you know, if, if it, you know, you're going to get a bump. Or a, or a head clash as well. So the mouth guards there, you're probably aware, aren't just for the direct, it's there to protect you against concussion from, a, from the up and under as well. So you get to there, you, you pop it out, you put it in your mouth, you play your game now, immediately off the field, we want to spray it with our quick clean, which is, a, it's like a pre-wash. Now what that's going to do is that's not soap based. What that's going to do is keep the, the germs and the saliva. So saliva is full of germs and there's dirt and all sorts of other bits and food particles coming out of your teeth. So it's gonna stop that from drying out and getting all sort of crusty so that you can then safely put it back in your cage if you like. And then it can stay there while you go off to celebrate your win. And you've got a couple of hours to, you've bought yourself some time. But then when you do get home uh, and you should be popping it into your, your uh, hygiene sport with your dental fresh, and we've got to give it the full treatment again. Now, because you're not eating with your sports mouth guard, probably just a good 15 to 20 seconds of really sort of, you know, getting down into that fitting surface of your sports mouth guard is adequate. Give it a really good thorough rinse off uh, and then you can leave it sitting in your hygiene uh, until the next game or you can pop it back into your cage uh, as long as that stays nice and clean uh, as well. So, you know, that's the system that, that we have for the sports mouth guards. And, you know, I was down at giving a, a, an oral hygiene presentation to a group of 37 female professional rugby union players uh, just a couple of months ago. And, you know, just one of the funniest 25, 30 minutes of my life. They were, <laughs> they were extremely fun to be, be with. And uh, if, you're, if you're ever going to follow an Australian women's professional team, uh, a big shout out to the, the Melbourne Rebels women's team. They were just absolutely fabulous, and, uh, and 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 they laughed when it was meant. You know, they they, they laughed at the right time, but they did take the message very very seriously, uh, because they want to see. You know, their health is is very important to them, and they'll be taking that message out to the community when, you know, the younger uh, boys and girls go to listen to their health message. So, uh, very very important. I think the interesting thing too, there's so much coming through about athletes, oral health and the connections between sport performance and their oral health. And again, it's what you said at the, at the beginning there about how everything that goes into the mouth goes elsewhere and it's all connected and why we have this thing that our, our heads are not connected to the rest of our bodies it's very logical but it seems to have always been you know your dental health your teeth or something separate yeah so i mean that's that's brilliant well, i'm so glad you talked us through all of that it was great 
Thank you. My absolute pleasure. And, and it's, uh, uh, you, you know, for the elite athlete, it might only be that one or two percent improvement in their uh, aerobic capacity that gives them the edge over their uh, competition. But at a, at a junior level, it could be cleaning the sports mouth guard probably could be preventing an asthma attack. And we all know how, uh, you know, deadly serious that can be. So, uh, you know, for some people, it's just a one or two percenter. For others, it, it could be literally a life-saving uh, endeavor. I just think that's an absolutely amazing range of products. And um, I mean, the sports, we've, uh, in the UK so far, we haven't got the sports hygiene, we've got the ordinary hygiene, but sports people are using it. Yes. <laughs> It's the same thing, different colour, isn't it? It's the same thing, yes. It's, it's just the engineering is exactly the same. And um, uh, But uh, fantastic to hear. No, I, I think it's, it's, it's always so much better to hear from the people that know most about it and have most experience with it. And I saw a lovely um, post the other day about how you'd helped, obviously, somebody in elderly care, and they had written... Thank you, Dr. Mark. What was the background to that? You'd obviously yeah, well, been helping somebody with their oral health and elderly person. I do have a, uh, one of my other great passions is, is a, a portable dental service that I've developed that goes into aged care facilities, uh, but also for people who are housebound. Uh, so that's not necessarily an age issue. People are recovering from True. cancer, people have MS. There's all sorts of reasons people struggle to get to the fixed clinic uh, and, and look that that particular moment was was a, a very powerful moment for me it, and um, you know if you ever need reminding of as to why dentistry and, and dental health is is you know one of the greatest jobs in the world is is when you really get to help someone who who really can't fend for themselves and they are relying on you to, to help them uh, and that was a very special moment uh, for, for that particular person. Well, it was it was it was wonderful to see, and I think the work that you do, you've had such a, an amazing career. I mean, we've only just skimmed the, the, the tail end of it. There was lots of things that went before, <laughs> which I think we we'll have to have that for maybe another day. Mark, we'll start to oh. see where where you got to be, where you are now, type thing. Uh, yeah, there's a few probably dark stories somewhere along the way for both. <laughs> in that one maybe skip that but listen let's finish off thank you so much for spending the time with me at the end of what i'm sure has been a really busy day tell me what is your favorite product in the hygiene range yeah well, look it, it, it is definitely i mean they're all they're all close to my heart because we started these each one from scratch but I, you know i love the hygiene myself it, it is a little bit of a fiddle to get to use but uh, and, and the reason it's my favourite is because my night guard is still now as clean as the day because I got a new one after a yeah. couple of years ago and it's still looking absolutely perfect. So from a, a personal preference, I love that. And also I do do a little bit of <clears throat> tooth whitening as well, you know, and I'm trying to stay as young as possible for as, for as long as possible. <laughs> and And honestly, <laughs> I pop my whitening stand in there and it gets all the... The whitening gel out. Yeah. Uh, I, I put it in. I let it I just let it sit there for a minute while the soap sort of, you know, soaks it all up, and then I wash it out, and it's and it's there sparkling. So I mean, that's for me. It's an absolute, and I haven't lost. I haven't lost a, a night guard since. So no, that's, well, that, that's true. <laughs> Brilliant. I, I, the sports um, range. I'm a big fan of the kids, though. Yeah, I thought I think that's great, and I've got great feedback from somebody who is is very involved in Ulster rugby to say it's the first time that uh, they haven't been digging at the bottom of their sports bag for their mouth guard <laughs> and being last on the pitch because they couldn't find their their mouth guard once they started using the 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 the, the, kit, the whole system, the kit stuff there, <laughs> and and the retainer. Hold. Tell me this last thing: what's your top tip for oral health? Look, just just remember that it, it is directly related to general health. It's it's so important that people, you know, and I know I've sort of, I'm sort of repeating myself a little bit, but this is this is uh, this is a general health issue, and if you start taking the general health the, the oral health message seriously, whether it's a night guard, whether it's brushing, whether it's cleaning between your teeth, then you will literally live longer. 
and you will live a healthier life. And I'll tell you what, you'll smell a heck of a lot better as well. So please, you know, give yourself the time, do it every day. Look, if you miss one day, just don't let two days become three days and, um, and understand that it's a general health, it's a personal hygiene um, issue we're discussing uh, and it needs to be taken that seriously. This, that is a brilliant note to end on um, that we all need to consider and reflect and take the time. I'm always going on about how important it is to spend time on your mouth for your oral and overall health and well-being. So, Mark, listen, thank you so much. We'll let you get finished with your day and go home and relax as we start ours. And uh, we will no doubt have you back uh, very soon to hear some more wonderful hints and tips from you. So, listen, thanks ever so much. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.